Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. In this session, we will uh, implement differential evolution on MATLAB. Before trying to implement, let us just quickly uh, go through the pseudocode of differential evolution once again. The input to differential evolution is the fitness function, the lower bound, the upper bounds, the population size, the number of iterations, the scaling factor and the crossover probability. So, this crossover probability will be required to decide whether to perform crossover or not. So, the first step is to initialize a random population, then we need to evaluate the fitness of the population, then we need to start uh, the iteration loop, right. So, for each population member, we are supposed to find a donor vector. So, donor vector will be found using three randomly selected solutions, XR1, XR2 and XR3, right. Once we have generated the donor vector using mutation, we need to perform crossover to get the trial vector. So, the elements of the trial vector will be either from the donor vector which we generated using mutation or it will be from the target vector which is actually uh, undergoing crossover. Uh, once we find out this trial vector, uh, we need to find out the trial vector for the next member, right. So, we are not supposed to update the population immediately. We need to determine all the trial vectors. That is why this for loop is separately returned before we bound and evaluate the fitness. So, once we have determined the trial solutions for all the target vectors, we need to bound each of them right and we need to evaluate the fitness. Once we have evaluated the fitness, we need to perform a greedy selection between the trial vector 1 and the target vector 1, trial vector 2 and target vector 2 and then update the population for the subsequent generation. So, we will implement this on MATLAB right. So, similar to what we have been doing previously, we will first walk you through the code and then we will uh, get into the debug mode and execute it line by line so that it gives a better understanding of the working of differential evolution. So, this is the differential evolution code. So, by now you would be knowing these two lines. It will help us to clear the command window and to clear the workspace. So, line 5, 6, 7 is similar to what we have been doing in uh, particle swarm optimization, teaching learning based optimization that we define the lower bound uh, of the problem, we define the upper bound of the problem and we define uh, variable prop which is actually a function handle. So, this functional handle is going to contain the optimization problem which we are going to solve. So, in this case we have given it peer new because peer is already a inbuilt function in MATLAB. So, we do not want to disturb that. So, what we have done is we are calculating the fitness using this peer new function. So, irrespective of the number of elements in x, each element would be squared and the sum of square of all the elements will be stored in this variable f and this is what is being returned, right. So, this is the same function which we have been using for the other two meta heuristic techniques, right. So, this prop will help us to determine the fitness function value. As in when we want to determine a fitness function value, we will use this variable prop which in turn will access this function spear new, right. So, and then we need to define the parameters related to differential evolution. So, here there are four parameters, one is the population size. Right now, we have taken the population size to be 5, uh, the number of iterations to be performed. So, uh, that we have taken it to be 100, the crossover probability to be 0.8, right, and the scaling factor which will be required in mutation as 0.85. So, these are the four parameters that we need to define with respect to differential evolution. So, this section defines the uh, problem definition, this section uh, defines the uh, uh, values of the parameters required by the algorithm. So, this variable f, uh, we are initializing it with NAN, right. So, it is supposed to contain the fitness function values of the NP population member. Similarly, we define this vector fu, which will contain the fitness function value of the newly generated trial vector. So, f will uh, contain the fitness function value of the target vector and fu will contain the fitness function value of the 
um, trial vectors, right. So, initially we uh, assign it NAND as and when we find the fitness function, we will appropriately assign those values. So, this is just uh, pre-initialization. As, as of now, they do not contain uh, the fitness function value, but uh, we just create that vector with uh, appropriate size. Right? So, then to determine the number of random numbers that would be required, we need to know the number of decision variables. We get the length of lower bound. So, that will tell us the number of decision variables and then we employ this variable u which is supposed to contain the trial vectors, right. So, trial vectors depending upon the size of the problem, the number of columns would vary, right. So, the number of column would be equal to the number of decision variable and the number of decision variable is given in this d, right. And we will get uh, as many trial vectors as the number of uh, target vectors and the number of target vector is given by uh, np. Right. So, we will get here a matrix of uh, NP cross D dimension, NP rows, D columns, all the values would be NAND to begin with. Right. As and when we determine the trial vector, we will save it in the corresponding row. So, this step uh, is to generate the initial population. So, what we are doing is we are replicating the lower bound NP times and we are replicating the range UB minus LB provides us the range. Right. So, again that we are replicating NP times. Right. And then if we see this, uh, the dimension of this, it will be NP cross D uh, because uh, the number of rows is governed by this NP and the number of columns is governed by the length of UB minus LB. Right. So, this will be NP cross D and we generate NP cross D random numbers between 0 to 1 and do an element wise multiplication with this range. So, this will help us to generate the initial population. So, the line 26 will help us to generate the initial population. Right. So, that is similar to what we have done in teaching learning based optimization and particle swarm optimization. Right. Line 28 to 30 is used to determine the fitness function value of each member. Right. So, we run this loop for p is equal to 1 to np and we access the solution pth solution. So, when we say pth solution, it is the pth row and all the columns. That is why we give this colon operator, right. So, uppercase p of p comma colon. So, the pth member in the population p will be sent to this uh, function sphere nu through this variable prob and it will return the fitness function value which will be stored in f of p, right. So, this loop will run n p times uh, and we will be able to determine the fitness of all the individual members. So, that would complete the initialization procedure. So, right now we have the initial population, the fitness function corresponding to each population member and we have created appropriate variables for storing the trial vector and the fitness function for the trial vector, right. So, now we start this iteration loop. So, line 33, we start the iteration loop and that will go on line 77. So, that is the iteration loop. So, anything that is contained between line 33 and 77 is going to be repeated t times, right, because t capital T is the number of iterations that we want to perform. So, in each iteration for every member, we are supposed to generate a donor vector and a, a trial vector, right. So, that is why we have this for loop anything between this line 35 and this line 60 will be repeated n p times. So, basically what we are doing is for each member we will be performing a mutation and crossover, right. So, now we need to perform mutation. So, if you remember the equation for mutation uh, required us to have three randomly selected solutions, right. So, what we can uh, do is generate three random numbers right between 1 and np and we can check whether uh, they are equal to i or not right let us consider the population size to be let us say uh, 10 right so and let us say we are uh, working with the solution 5 so we are supposed to select three numbers right which are not identical and they are not equal to 5 so one way to do is that to randomly select three numbers and check whether each of them are uh, equal to one another or not and also check whether it is equal to phi or not. If it is equal, if it happens that let us say R1 is we select to be 2, R2 to be say let us say 3, R3 to be let us say 8, right. So, we need to check whether any of this equal to phi and all of them are unique, right. If not, we need to again go and generate uh, random numbers. So, that way that is one way to generate those three numbers. But what we will be doing over here is if our population size is 10, Right. And if we are working with let us say the fifth solution. So, what we will do is we will generate something called as candidate 
right so the candidate now are all the solution except phi right so it is 1 2 3 4 6 7 8 9 10 so this we can generate using uh, this command right candidate is equal to we can say 1 to i minus 1 well, that will help us get these values and then i plus 1 up to np right so that will help us to generate this vector uh, if i is equal to 5 if i happens to be 6 then the candidate vector would be 1 2 3 4 5 7 8 9 10 Right, so, this way we can avoid the solution which we do not uh, want. So, here we do not have 6. So, once we have this, right, so what we will do with this is we will randomly permutate this. So, when we randomly permutate, let us say we get uh, 10, 1, 9, 8, 7 and so on. Right. So, once we randomly permutate this vector, these first 3 numbers would be unique because here if you see all the numbers are unique, they do not contain the solution 5 which we need to avoid. Right? And all, since all of them are unique, I can randomly shuffle them and take the first 3. Right? So, that way we will be able to get 3 solutions which are unique and not equal to the ith solution. Right? So, this is the strategy that we will employ to generate the random solution. So, this way we can always be sure that the 3 solutions which we are selecting are unique as well as they are not equal to i and we do not need to uh, employ if condition to uh, check that. So, here we are selecting the candidates, right. So, candidate is i to i minus 1, right, and i plus 1 to np. So, we have generated that vector which contains indexes of all the population, right, except for the ith member, right. So, this is the list of candidates. These are the potential candidates from which we can select the random solution, right. Remember, these are not the entire solution vector but just their index. Uh, the solution vector themselves are stored in uh, p right right now we are only uh, identifying the random solutions so once we have this candidates we can use this randpom function so randpom function we can see over here so if i give randpom of let's say 10 it will permutate uh, numbers 1 to 10 so here if we see the numbers are between 1 to 10 right and they are uh, randomly arranged right so uh, if you do this as every time we do this we will have numbers 1 to 10 randomly permutated right so this will help us to shuffle right so we will use this function to shuffle and then we require only 3 solutions we do not require all the 10 solutions we require only 3 solutions so what we will do is randpom of 10 comma 3 if we do randpom of 10 comma 3 it will give us 3 solutions right uh, which are unique right and they are taken from 1 to 10 right so this is how we can use the randpom function over here so here we say randpom np minus 1 comma 3 so this 3 should be clear because we require 3 unique solutions right this is np minus 1 not np because there are only np minus 1 elements over here right so if np is 10 candidates will have only 9 elements because we are eliminating the ith variable right so there are only 9 variables if np is 10 there are only 9 variables so now we are accessing those particular solutions so when we do this candidates of randpom of np minus 1 comma 3 it will access candidate of 5 candidate of 6 and candidate of 1 those three values we are storing in this uh, variable idx right so idx is going to contain the three randomly selected solutions and these two lines will ensure right that these three solutions are unique uh, they are not equal to one another and that they are also not equal to the ith variable so this was the condition required in mutation remember we require three random solutions we need to select th three random solutions all the three solutions have to be unique and on top of that they should not be equal to the target uh, solution right so target solution is indicated by i so it should not be i we need three random solutions r1 r2 r3 these two lines will help us to implement that when we run this in debug mode it will be much more clear so now that we have identified the three random uh, solutions right we extract the solution so we say x1 x2 x3 is equal to p of 
index of 1 right because the fifth solution in is in position 1 if these three are the selected solutions then phi is located at idx of 1 6 is located at idx of 2 and 1 is located at idx of 3 right so uh, we use that as the uh, row and we need to extract all the columns right we need to extract this from the population vector so now we have selected the three solutions the actual three solutions idx contained only the index of which solution is to be selected right whereas x1 x2 x3 actually contain the solution because we are extracting it from the corresponding row from the population right so the dimension of x x1 x2 x3 will be it will be a row vector right and the number of columns would be equal to the number of decision variables so once we have identified the three random solutions we can generate the donor vector so this is straightforward v is equal to x1 plus f into x2 minus x3 right f is already a, a parameter which is sub, which is to be supplied by user so here we have taken uh, f to be 0.85 right so this will help us to uh, determine the donor vector so in order to generate the trial vector right the, the trial vector will contain the value of either the donor vector or the target vector right so to do that we will require this random number r and we also require this randomly selected number del right so del is between one and decision variable uh, number of decision variables so it's a random integer which has to be between one and decision variable so we need to first generate del right and then we need to generate random number for each of the variable in line 50 what we are doing is del is equal to randi of d comma 1 so randi uh, you have seen randi the use of randi in tlbo uh, right for generating teaching factor we had used right so when we say rand of d comma 1 it randomly generates one integer value from 1 to d right and since this is 1 it returns a scalar value right since we are starting from 1 we do not need to give 1 to d it is sufficient to give just d right and we require only one value so that is why the second one is given so you can quickly do this over here and see what uh, happens so when we say del is equal to rand i of 100 comma 1 so it will give us a random integer right one value which is from 1 to 100 right so that is how we are generating the del value right so once we have generated the del value we need to run a loop for all the decision variables remember that equation which we saw is for all the variables the trial vector will have a dimension of 1 cross d right we just need to choose whether the jth value will come from the target vector or from the donor vector so we run this for loop over here for j is equal to 1 to d we generate a random number using this uh, function rand right so we check for this condition if rand is less than or equal to pc right or if it is equal to del right if j is equal to del if that condition satisfied we need to take the value of the trial vector right from the donor vector right otherwise we need to take the value of the trial vector from the target vector so target vector is stored in p trial vector is stored in u and our donor vector is in v right so here we need to see that the, this is a double equal to sign that is a conditional check right if either this condition is satisfied or this condition is satisfied it will assign it from the donor vector else it will assign it from the target vector right so this for loop will run for d times uh, because we have d decision variables right and this for loop is inside this uh, external for loop for every member so for every member that loop will run for d times because we have d decision variable so that would complete the crossover operation right so at the end of line uh, 60 we would have completed for all the population member crossover as well as mutation and the trial vectors are stored in u the target vectors are in p this v if you see uh, we are not necessarily storing v of every population member we generate the v for the first population member right uh, i mean decide on the trial vector and then we overwrite it because at the end of crossover we will require only the trial vector which is stored in u and the target vector which is stored in p 
we do not require the individual donor vector because greedy search we are going to perform between the target vector and the trial vector. So, we are not storing the donor vector every time we are overwriting the donor vector right. So, remember we are overwriting after making use of it right. So, it is not like we are never uh, using it. So, once uh, the mutation and crossover is over right for a particular member uh, we need to do it for the second member, third member till the NP members and then here uh, we again run a loop for j is equal to 1 to NP and then we bound the variables right. So, this bounding of the variables we have seen previously that if we use a min operator min of ub comma the actual solution. So, the actual solution is j throw all columns. So, j throw all columns will give us the jth solution. Right. So, we are using the min operator. So, if in line 65, if any variable in the jth row of u violates the upper bound, it will be brought back to the upper bound. Right. Similarly, line 66 will ensure that the trial vector u of j comma colon, if any of those values violate the lower bound, it is brought back into the lower bound using this max operator. And if the values do not violate the lower and upper bound it will be retained as such. So, we had seen 65 and 66 in detail when we learnt uh, teaching learning based optimization right. So, now this trial vector is bounded right. So, what we will do is we will evaluate the fitness of it. To evaluate the fitness of it we need the fitness function that fitness function we have stored in the variable prob. So, prob is a function handle wherein we are sending the j through of u to this prob function we will be able to determine the fitness function of the jth trial vector right. Once we have the fitness function of the jth trial vector, we are ready to perform a greedy selection. So, we are checking whether the fitness of the jth trial vector is better than the fitness of the jth target vector. So, if this condition is satisfied, we overwrite the jth member of the population with the jth member of the trial solution. Right. And similarly, we replace the uh, fitness function value. Right. So, this is how the greedy selection is performed. Right. So, since it is inside this particular for loop, right, it will be done for NP times wherein we are comparing the first trial with first target, second trial with second target, third trial with third target and depending upon whichever is better will be uh, taken into the population. So, if the target is actually better then we do not need to do anything that is why we do not have an else part to this if loop that particular solution will be retained right. But if it happens that the trial vector is uh, better then the trial vector is uh, used to overwrite the jth member of the population right. So, this will again be done for NP times because our population is NP and this entire procedure is inside this for loop which governs the iterations the number of iterations. So, this will be repeated for t times right. So, that completes the implementation of uh, differential evolution. Just like in TLB at the end of it we are interested in what is the best solution obtained so far right. So, that can be determined by determining the minimum of the fitness function right using this min function. So, this min function will give us what is the minimum value that we are storing in this variable best fitness and it will also give us the location as to where it is located right. So, using this IND which is the location of the best fitness function value we extract the corresponding population member right. So, let us say if IND is 5 then we are extracting the fifth row of the population and we are assigning it to best all. So, that way we will be able to see what is the best fitness and what is the best solution at the end of T iterations right. Let us now run this code in the uh, debug mode right. So, let me put a breakpoint over here and if we execute this code right. Uh, so, the first step is CLC. So, as you know that it will clear the screen. The second one is it will clear the workspace right. So, the lower bounds are defined, the upper bounds are defined and now we are defining the function handle right. So, prob will be defined. So, now prob is a function handle. Uh, so, we are solving this uh, objective function uh, spear new right. So, now we need to define the uh, parameters right. So, population size is 5, number of uh, iterations is 10. So, the crossover probability is being defined as 0.8, the scaling factor is defined as 0.85 right. 
So, now we are defining uh, a variable f which will have n a n values as many n a n values as the population size right. So, here the population size is phi. So, we are uh, having phi n a n values right. So, the next step is to find out the length of the lower bound. Length of the lower bound is phi in this case right and then we generate the initial population as usual right. So, here if we see so, this is the population the random population which we have generated within the bounds and this is going to be the uh, new solutions which we are generating in every iteration right. So, as we generate solutions we will store in this u matrix right. So, that we had defined here right. So, we will store that in u matrix as and when we generate. So, once the population has been defined we need to evaluate its fitness function right. So, we are running this loop from uh, 1 to n p. So, now it will uh, go into the fitness function. So, again same thing x is now uh, the first row as you can see the first row is 5.429 and these values. So, those values would be over here. So, it will determine the fitness function value and that is being returned back right. So, here if we see the first the fitness function of the first solution has been determined to be 129.0137. So, similarly if we keep uh, doing this right. So, it will uh, determine the fitness function of all the phi solutions. So, now we have the initial population generated in this line 26 and we have evaluated the fitness function value over here right. So, now we have done that we can begin the iteration uh, loop of differential evolution right. So, if we step in so, t is 1 i is also 1. So, now we will determine who are the possible candidates who can be partner in the mutation phase right. So, we are creating this vector 1 to i minus 1. So, in this case it will be 1 to 0. So, that will not return us any value and this will be 2 to n p right. So, if we do this step. So, here if we see candidates are 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, we have eliminated the i th solution from the list of candidate solution right. So, because the for the first solution it cannot be partner. So, we are going to select partner from this four solutions 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what we are doing is a permutation rand perm from 1 to 4. So, this will be 4 n p minus 1 this value would be 4 and we are taking three randomly permutated values. Right? So, here in this case 4, 3, 5. So, now if you see this satisfies our purpose that we are able to select three different partners which are not equal to the i th solution. So, in line 41, 42, 43 we are just going to assign the corresponding solution to x 1, x 2, x 3 right. So, p if we say this is the original population i d x is 4, 3, 5. So, i d x of 1 is 4. So, x 1 will be the fourth solution right. So, let us just see that. So, x 1 is this one right and if we look at the population the fourth solution is 9.3195.3647 and so on. So, that is the first solution right. So, if we continue this the second solution the second partner solution is i d x of 2 right. So, i d x is 435. So, i d x of 2 is 3. So, the third solution is nothing but x 2. So, the third solution is this one and which is assigned as x 2 right. So, similarly uh, the third solution x 3 is determined. Now, we have figured out solution x 1, x 2, x 3 right. We need to calculate the donor vector. So, donor vector this is the equation that was given in our discussion right. So, x 1 plus f into x 2 minus x 3. So, if we do this then this is the donor vector. Remember the donor vector may or may not be in the bounds right. So, in this case it is not in the bounds our uh, upper bound is 10 right. So, uh, in this case the donor vector first variable, fourth variable and fifth variable are not in the bounds, but we will not be bounding them right. So, now we need to perform the crossover for the first solution itself. For performing crossover we need to first randomly select one of the decision variables right. So, that is what we are doing with this rand i right. So, rand i of d comma 1 will give us a scalar value from 1 to capital D. D in this case is phi. So, 1 to 5 it will give us one uh, random value. So, in this case it happens to be 4. So, this value is randomly selected right. Now, we need to perform the crossover operation with these two conditions. So, if uh, we need to select a random number if it is less than the crossover probability or 
if del is equal to j we need to copy from the donor vector else we need to copy from the trial vector. So, the trial vector uh, is going to be stored in u for j is equal to 1 the value of j is 1 now right. So, it goes into this uh, this condition is satisfied. So, the random number that it generated was less than crossover probability because del is 4 and j is 1. So, this condition was not satisfied this condition was satisfied because as soon as we say rand we get a random number. So, here we did not save it in a particular variable otherwise we could have seen what is the actual value. So, now u if we see it is copied from the donor vector the first value of donor vector is copied as the first value of trial vector right. So, similarly we need to proceed for the second variable. So, for the second variable if we see again that condition is satisfied. So, 4.9037 has to be copied over here right. So, if we continue that so that happens right for the third solution the condition is again satisfied right. So, 4.8190 uh, which is from the donor vector is copied over here right and similarly for the fourth time again that condition is satisfied right. For the fifth time again the condition is satisfied right. So, in this case it happens that all the five values came from the donor vector. So, our donor vector was uh, this thing 12.505, 4.9037, 4.819 minus 1.3556 and 13.1750 and that has been copied over here. So, in this case no value from the target vector has come, but that need not be always true right. So, depending upon the random number we generate and the random decision variable that we select over here in line 50, it may happen that some of the values are being copied from the trial vector also. Remember we are not going to bound this solution evaluate the objective function or update the population right. So, we need to complete the mutation and crossover for all the solutions only then we will bound and do greedy selection right. So, this end will make sure that we are going back to this second member. So, if we go to this so now if we see I will have a value of 2. So, similarly the candidates are except 2 1 3 4 5 we need to select 3 candidates from here 1 3 4 5. So, we randomly permutate uh, values 1 2 4 and select 3 values and then extract 3 values from here right. So, in this case the solution 4 1 3 are the partner for the ith solution I, ith solution is currently the second solution. So, the partner for the second solution are fourth solution first solution and third solution. So, line 41, 42, 43 again will be just assigning those solutions from the population to x1, x2, x3 right. So, these are the 3 solutions x1, x2 and x3. Again we need to calculate the donor vector right. So, this is the donor vector again donor vector is not within the bounds. So, we need not worry about the bounding of the solution over here. So, in crossover we require a random decision variable. So, we select that right. So, in this case the decision variable is 3 right. So, here if we see uh, even in this case the random number generated was less than crossover probability right. So, again in the second case 2, the third case 2, the fourth case. So, this is the first time if you see it is coming to this else, else part right. So, now the donor vector was uh, over here. 9.49 minus 1.17, 5.01, 5.17 and 2.52. So, the first 3 values were copied. For the fourth value since neither of this condition is satisfied uh, we will have to take the value from the population right. So, population if we see uh, we are currently in the second solution and j is 4 right. So, second, second row fourth column if you see it is 6.4134 that will be coming over here right. So, step in right. So, as expected 6.4134 comes over here right. Continuing that for the next variable right. So, it comes from the donor vector right. So, now we have generated 2 trial vectors right. So, similarly you can uh, debug and look for all the other uh, trial vectors. What we will do is we will have a breakpoint over here and we will click on this continue right. 
So, now all the 5 trial vectors are generated right. So, since it is similar we did not go through each and every uh, solution. So, we had seen both the cases wherein it goes into this if condition. So, now that we have generated all the trial vectors we will be checking whether they are in the bounds if whichever value is not in the bounds we will be bringing it either to its lower bound or the upper bound right and then evaluate its fitness and perform a greedy selection strategy right. So, this loop also runs from for j is equal to 1 to n p remembers we are still in the first iteration. So, if we type t over here it is still the first iteration right. So, if we do this step right? so the first variable right. So, u b right. So, u b is 10 10 10 10 right. So, it is all these 5 values are going to be compared with 10 wherever 10 is being violated. So, for example, in the over here the first variable and the last variable right. So, those two are violating the upper bound. So, they will be reset to 10 the value of the first and last variable have been reset right. Similarly, uh, this variable if we see is violating the lower bound the lower bound is 0. So, since this variable is violating the lower bound it will be reset to 0. Yes. So, now this first solution is within the bounds. So, since the first solution is within the bounds we can calculate its fitness function and perform a greedy selection right. So, in this step if you see line 68 over here it will uh, we are calling this variable prop this prop is nothing but the uh, function handle spear new. So, if we do step in it is going to this function right and again the fitness function will be evaluated. So, as we can see the first row of u has been sent into the function as input right. So, the fitness function is calculated. Right? So, now the fitness function value is 247 right. So, if we look at f u the first value is 247 and the solution which uh, which are already there right that fitness is 129. So, this condition is not satisfied right. Right now we are looking at j is equal to 1. So, f u of 1 is not less than f of 1. So, this part will not be executed right and the population remains the same right. Uh, so, this solution is now discarded. So, if we continue this for the second solution again uh, this is the only variable which is violating the bounds. Right. So, this will become 0 once line 65 and 66 are executed right. So, this is 0 right again the fitness function will be evaluated with this f u right. So, in this case the second value is 162.8262 and over here it is 115 right. So, even in this case the newly generated trial vector is not better than the second solution. So, in the third case over here if we see uh, this variable is violating this variable is violating both of them are violating the lower bounds right. So, both of them have been reset to 0 right again calculating its fitness function value. So, the fitness function value would be 23.3707. So, the third fitness function is 144 the current third solution in the population has a fitness of 144 whereas, the newly generated trial vector has a fitness of 23.37. So, the newly generated solution will be taken into the population right. So, we are overwriting the jth row with the third row of u right. So, u contains the trial vectors. So, both uh, the population as well as the fitness function have to be updated right. So, that is what we are doing in line 71 and 72 right and then we need to continue this for the fourth solution. So, for the fourth solution right. So, fourth solution if we see the third and the fourth variable are violating the lower bounds right. So, those are set to zeros. Again we evaluate the fitness function right. Even in this case the newly generated solution fourth solution has a fitness function of 48 whereas, the original one has 136 right. So, that is why we overwrite this right? and finally, the fifth solution similarly right. So, for the fifth solution the fitness function of the trial vector is 166 whereas, the original solution which we have is 19.3. So, we do not need to overwrite. So, if we step this right. So, this completes one iteration of 
differential evolution right. So, similarly we will have to perform all the iterations the second iteration the third iteration all the way up to 100 iterations uh, because in this case we had set the value of t to be uh, 100 right. So, as you can see the implementation of differential evolution is very easy right. So, let me just uh, execute this right. Let me put a breakpoint over here. As soon as it com completes all the iterations, I want it to pause. So now I can give this continue. Let me remove this breakpoint. Right. So now I am not interested in doing every iteration, right? Because we have seen what is happening in every iteration. So let me just do this continue. Now let me just clear the screen, right? Let us see uh, our f, right, and uh, p. Right. So, all the solutions are zeros, right? Uh, if you see all the phi solutions are 0, 0, 0 and the fitness function is 0, 0, 0, which is the uh, globally optimal solution for this, this function, right? So, now what we are doing is similar to what we have done in TLBO and PSO, we want to determine what is the best fitness function value and what is the best solution. So, we find this min of f, right? Because f contains the fitness function value, we find the minimum value, the minimum value is stored in this best fit and its location is stored in IND, right. And then we are extracting the population member corresponding to IND, right. So, if it happens that the second solution is the best one, then we are extracting the second solution, second row, all the columns from the variable P or the population and storing it as best sol, right. So, at the end of it, it gives what is the best fitness function value and the best solution. Right. So, so, now let me remove all the breakpoints, right, and put a semicolon. So, now we can uh, change this lower and upper bound and see how it is performing. So, what we will do is we will say that the lower bound is minus 100, right, once of 1 comma, let us say I have 50 variables. So, 1 row 50 columns, lower bound will give 50 times minus 100, right. So, same thing I can copy it over here and let us say the upper bound is 100, right. We are not changing the objective function, just we are changing the lower and upper bound, right. So, as you know these problems are scalable. So, we just want to test that if the problem size is really uh, big, right. Instead of 5 variables, let us say if it is 50 variables and we are working with a population size of 50 and 100 iterations. So, let us see whether it is able to find the uh, globally optimal solution. In this case, it is able to find a solution which has a fitness function value of 9.07 into 10 power 4 and all the variables if you see it is between minus 100 and plus 100, right. So, the uh, bounds are no longer 0 to 10, right. So, the bounds are between minus 100 to 100. So, this minus 67.9827 minus 63.1130 all those are within bounds, right. So, in this case we see that it is not able to find the optimal solution. So, the optimal solution was again zeros, right. So, if we take all the 50 variable to be 0, we will get a fitness function value of 0. That is the end of this session. In the next session, we will look at genetic algorithms. First, we will look into binary coded genetic algorithm, then we will look into real coded genetic algorithm and then we will only implement a real coded genetic algorithm on MATLAB. Thank you.